Hello everyone, in this video I show you the Redis. Redis is in memory data store. It's, it's used mostly for cache, but uh, Redis is also used for as a broker of messages. Uh, today I show you how to connect Redis with Spring Boot, and in the next video I show you how to use Redis as a cache within Spring Boot. So firstly, we need a Spring Boot empty project with Redis dependencies. I navigate to Spring Starter and initialize my empty Spring Boot project. I rename group artifact package name. I use Java 11 and I select dependencies. First dependency is Redis. Uh, we need a Spring Data Redis. Uh, next, let's add web dependency. Uh, let's add Lombok. And actually, that's it. Uh, for the next video, I'm gonna record the next video on this project. So I add in memory data store and Spring Data GPA and click generate. Ok, I opened my new generated project and let's just try to store some data in the Redis. Redis accepts um, data structures like map, sets, links, strings, etc. So we're gonna store our object in as set, as hash set. So firstly we need to create a model which we're gonna store in Redis. So let's create package model. And let's store, for example, users uh, model with a name, for example, with login and age. Let's add data from Lombok to generate getter setters uh, equals hash code into the stream. And let's add some fields. Mm, that's it. I think two fields would be enough. And uh, let's now create an annotation from Redis, which allows us to store our model um, as a Redis data. It's a Redis hash. And let's store our user's model in the user's hash map. So if you sprint boot with Redis, um, it's easy to implement all the connections because uh, out of the box uh, Spring Boot allows you to connect to the Redis if it runs on the local host. So, uh, firstly, you need to install actual Redis. I already installed it. Uh, I use uh, Docker Compose. Uh, I include this Docker Compose to the project so you will be able to run uh, this Redis on your local machine through the Docker Compose if you want to. Ok, now, so, if you use new Spring Boot application, you don't need any additional setup. Uh, just uh, Spring Boot see that you have a Spring Boot Starter Redis in the dependency and it will uh, start your application uh, and see this Redis hash and will store your model in the Redis. So next let's create repository and create users repository. Annotate our repository as a repository and extends crude repository. Now let's add 
ID for our users as, as to put it as a key. And next, let's create service. Annotate our service as service to be able to uh, auto-wire this class in the controller. Uh, let's add some all arcs constructor to be able to inject our user repository through the constructor and let's create a couple of methods firstly we need to store our users so let's create save method Next method is gonna be find all, for example. Okay. Actually, in the crude repository find all returns iterable so I'm gonna implement uh, to declare my own find all which returns me the list of my user models and yeah I think that would be enough just to say to see how can we store our users in the Redis. Uh, so uh, I repeat, no additional um, settings are required for the Redis and Spring Boot. Let's create controller. First method is same, just simple method. Just save the incoming user. Let's wire our service. something like that. I'm not gonna validate my user or other incoming params. Uh, you will do it uh, when you execute this tutorial. My purpose is to show you how to work with Redis and Spring Boot. So next method is get mapping just to find all users.
Okay, something like that. So let's try to execute our application and see if it works fine. So our application started successfully. Let's navigate to the Postman and try to execute uh, firstly save user and then uh, get all. So let's navigate to the Postman and execute HTTP. user save and the post method hit send and we see that we stored our user in the database. If we won't provide the login, uh, Redis will generate the login uh, using its own uh, login generation. Uh, if you can see, if we hit without login, it's, it sets uh, its own uh, ID. Uh, sorry. I mean, if we don't provide ID, uh, Redis will store its own um, ID. If we hit once again, Redis will generate another ID and every time we hit save, uh, the new ID will be generated. So let's just try to find all. Let me copy paste this request. And as you can see, all our users are stored in the Redis. Uh, that's how we connected the Spring Boot and Redis application. So as you can see, um, there is no um, complicity in this action. Just add Redis hash uh, and add Redis dependency to the Spring Boot. Of course, if you have uh, some other properties for your Redis, just add them to the application properties you can find easily on the internet. What should you add to your application properties? But yeah, if you work on your local machine, uh, that would be enough. Uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, as I told you, Redis is usually used uh, as a cache. So in the next video, I show you how to connect uh, the cache using Redis and Spring Boot. Uh, thank you thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.